Welcome back everybody to actually our second GSI sponsored video here today. Uh, we are going to, well, <laughs> it's happened in the past because actually the footage that you guys will see here in just a second is pretty much the audio on the GoPro didn't work. Can you believe it? Let's check the, okay, it's working now. So we're in good shape. So I'm reintroducing this video to you guys because I couldn't introduce it the other day. And right now we got some other work that we're trying to get done. Oh, in this video, I'm gonna fly a drone here just in a second for you guys. Give you an overlay of this video and it's probably gonna go into a couple videos. Will be about the site prep for this bin site and how I'd like to have it work laid out, but how I want it to be laid out is one way and how my father wants to be laid out is the other way. Uh, but this is his ground, so he's gonna have final say in it. You're gonna see this huge old pile of trees Yep, that's going to be taken care of because we took a little section out there and I want to get rid of the rest of those trees, but I don't know if that's going to happen. You can see there's, there's dead grass right here because the driveway is going to be reformed up a little bit. There's a pile of rock over there because we brought in some rock. Essentially, what we're going to look at here real quick is I actually did a little bit of a drawing to show you kind of how I would like the place to look. That's what we're trying to shape up in this few videos coming on so i guess if you would and we don't ever really ask this at the beginning of videos if you'd uh, hit the thumbs up button for andrew I'd appreciate oh he's got new gloves on look at that did you want to tell him why you got new gloves today <laughs> not really he got covered in oil yesterday i would feel bad but i'm pretty sure he's the one i don't remember but i'm pretty sure you're the one that turned the remote did he no, uh, was it me did, huh nobody did obviously. a remote didn't quite get close and he pulled the hose and well, let's go back up and tell him why I was unplugging it. <laughs> because, he because he had I gloves. Really wanted to ever have gloves on. <laughs> yeah, because he had gloves. So, <laughs> anyways, if you would hit the thumbs up button. What we'll do here is uh, I'll put the drone up in the air, walk you through what's kind of going on. Uh, look at that. You can see what we kind of want to have done. It's the before of this. Uh, and then we'll fly it again when it gets done. It won't be in this video because obviously it's not all done yet. And we'll talk about. Uh, GSI Grainview. Let's get to work. Okay, here we go. Look at this beginning of the project. We have uh, kind of an overview for you guys so we can compare it at the beginning and the end. Once we get done what we can get done today. Here's the tree line that I'd really like to get rid of um, and kind of clean up. It's just an old fence line. Uh, I'd really like to fix the drainage coming through there and get that cleaned up. Maybe put some nice trees in there. Uh, what we're looking at here is the south side of the roundabout. You guys can see kind of swings into the three bins that are there right now. Uh, makes it really easy to come in and out of this area when you got the turnaround there. And we have all the unloads facing the same way. Uh, we'll be bringing in quite a bit of gravel here to gravel in kind of some of the driveways. A little more gravel to the hay shed, the old... Uh, Quonset building I think is what I call it gravel in between those widen out the drive uh, There if you can see where my dad's walking in the gray shirt that will get widened out as well and drainage issues fixed there is uh, We talked about right here is where the next grain bin is going to be going in I like to do a little bit of cleanup uh, Clean up the back side of these sheds so that we can easily mow around them It's like it just needs a couple of things done so that maintenance such as mowing uh, weed eating things like that can be done easily uh, to keep this property looking really clean really nice and highly functional
So this is looking substantially different. One of the questions we got on the first videos that we did talking about the plans for the grain setup here is, are we going to put any grain monitoring system in this facility? And the answer is yes, we are. And we've got the man here to actually talk about it here today. Uh, Greg, you want to introduce yourself? Tell what you do at GSI? Yeah, so Greg Tramey, uh, I lead our sales team that sells all of our new digital and technology products. So the, the GrainView product that we'll talk about today uh, falls into that category. Well, what is GrainView, just for people to know real quick? Yeah, so GrainView is a digital um, temperature and moisture cable monitoring product. So we're gonna have cables inside the bin. I actually uh, have an example of them right here. This is kind of a, a sample of what'll be in the bin. So on this right here, we have uh, underneath here, we have a temperature and a moisture sensor. So they'll be in four foot increments along the cable. So we'll hang these throughout the bin. And then with that, we can look at the temperature and moisture of the crop that's in there, see how it's changing, and then make sure that we keep that crop in, in the best condition that we can while it's in storage. And so the attractive part of this and a little bit I know about the system so far is, is that when this is done we'll have just shy of a uh, hundred thousand bushels here right now at this point and right now corn's right around eight bucks so hundred thousand bushels you're at eight hundred thousand dollars worth of value stored in those grain bins right there and once it's actually in your grain bin your crop insurance and stuff doesn't do anything for you so you, people don't even pay eight hundred thousand dollars for a house anymore and you carry lots of great insurance on your house against hail damage and everything else like that. So why would you not want to have some form of technology to manage that kind of asset? And that's where this technology really comes into play, along with a couple of other neat features that can happen from what I understand. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple things that we can do with those cables, um, we can also give you an approximate idea of how much grain is in the bin. So from uh, an inventory standpoint, you know, you talked about managing a lot of dollars sitting there. So we'll be able to see when grain is going in or out. Um, the other thing is it allows us to do automated aeration control. So there's a lot going on inside this bin, especially, you know, you put grain in it in the fall and then we go from warmer weather, it gets cold. You might want to keep that grain until now when it's pretty warm again. So you got to take that grain through a you got to get it cold and then you got to get it back warm again so that we can keep it in good condition. So we've got some automated tools that will help manage the fans. So it'll basically control the aeration for you so that when we have these warm spring into summer days, when, when you're out trying to plant a crop, you don't have to worry about the grain that's in there. You know you can keep it in good condition because the system's going to monitor it for you. Which we're talking about this and I've got a grain bin that I haven't turned the fans on yet and I'm guessing it's the corn is definitely cooler then the outside temperature, it's like 80 degrees a day, feels like 100, it's gonna be 100 all week this week. Yep. Uh, what happens to grain when you, obviously from what every, my limited knowledge on grain management is you wanna put it in dry or as dry as you can. And if it's not dry, once it's cold, you wanna get it frozen. Right. Which means to legitimately blow cold air in there until you think the grain is frozen because once it's frozen, it's not gonna spoil. Right. But once you start to warm back up again, that's when your issues happen. So what's, what happens to grain when you go from the hot to cold, cold to hot? Yeah, really what we're worried about there is, you know, we've got grain, it's, it's a really good insulator. So it, when it gets to a certain temperature, it likes to stay that way for a while. So if we get grain in that bin that's maybe 30, 40, 50 degrees, and we get days like today when it's 90 degrees and the sun is beating on that sidewall, that sidewall starts to get warm and that grain is cold. But when we have that big temperature difference, you're gonna to start to get condensation and things happening. That's when you start getting moisture in the bin. We all know moisture is, is bad. You're gonna to start to lead to those spoilage events. So what we can do with a system like GrainView is, um, we can basically monitor the temperatures outside. We know the temperature of the grain inside, and then we can work to keep those temperatures close together by running your fans when they'll be the most impactful. And then, um, so just like you said, we can slowly get your corn cool in the winter. We can also slowly warm it back up because as you get into these warm weather, we want to slowly bring it back up to the same temperature outside. And then we avoid any of that condensation that can happen in the bin where you see that grain wants to stick onto the walls or maybe up around the roof when the, you start to get a little dripping in there from, from temperature changes, especially when it's as humid as it is out here today. Yeah. Put grain view into a bin, you actually have to install a little bit of hardware here. Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, we've got some 
the, the actual sensor cables that will go inside. So um, we have some that can do temperature only, some that can do temperature and moisture. The one I have here happens to be temp and moisture, um, but they basically look the same. And, and in a lot of bins, we'll put a combination of the two. And then there's gonna be several boxes that go on the bin. So we'll have a, we'll have a gateway. Um, that gateway is one per farm. Say if you were to put um, three systems in here, we'd only need one gateway. So that gateway is gonna be actually where we get our cloud connection. So it's gonna have a cellular SIM card in it that's communicating the data up to the cloud. And then on the top of the bin, we're gonna have our cable monitoring hub. So that's where all of our cables are gonna come in and communicate that information to the gateway that we can get that up to, the, to our cloud services. And then on the side of the bin, we're also gonna have our fan control box. So we'll mount that near the fan so that we can wire that in. And that's gonna allow us to do all of the actual um, automation and control of the aeration fans uh, remotely uh, through, the, through the portal. As a farmer, where does the return come from installing one of these systems into our beds? Yeah, so it's a couple different ways. One is really in, a big one is electrical savings. What we generally find with a lot of farmers when they don't have information about what's going on with the grain inside the bin, the tendency is to turn the fans on and leave them on a lot longer than they would really need to. So, you know, it was always kind of better to be safe than sorry. So if I don't know what's going on there, just run those fans and, uh, and make sure that I get that grain in the right condition. Well, with the system, we can actually only run the fans when the conditions outside are correct. And we can also only run them for the amount of time that's necessary. So we can save the farmers a fair amount of money by not running the fans so much. But when we do run the fans, make sure that it's, it's the most impactful that it can be. And then the other real big thing is just preventing spoilage and loss. So again, when, when you know what's going on in there, you can guarantee that the grain inside, the condition you put it in there is the condition you're gonna bring it out in. So with that, it's, it's just making sure that we don't have any of those catastrophic spoilage events, especially, you know, this year we've got a year when it was good to get rid of that grain early, but a lot of years you may be saving grain into these really, really warm days and that's when things can get to be troublesome. With a system like this, we can make sure that we can keep that grain in condition into these warm months and you can sell it when, you know, the marketing plan may say is the, is the best to do that. So one thing that I've heard about this is that you can actually rehydrate soybeans yep. and um, maybe some people know about that is that you, we harvest soybeans and a lot of times it gets down to 10, 11 percent and if you can put moisture back into the soybeans, you're putting weight back into the soybeans and we sell weight so obviously then we're making money on that aspect but when it comes to corn what moisture would you say that we can safely put into grain bins and make it kind of keep for the year? Yeah, you know, if uh, one of the things that we always tell people is there's a, there's a lot of resources available. You can go to your university extensions and look at those safe storage charts that'll basically tell you if it's going to be this ambient temperature and this moisture, this is how long I can keep it. But if we take your bins, for example, here, you know, these really aren't set up to be corn drying bins. They're just, you don't have enough fan, you don't have heaters. So we would want that corn to be 17, 16, or even lower if you're gonna plan to keep it through these really, really warm months. Um, a system like this, all it can do is, is still um, only take out the moisture that the air conditions are going to allow. It, it, it can't work with, uh, with anything that Mother Nature hasn't already provided. So that question really comes down to how many good warm dry days are you going to get in the fall but if you're trying to air dry corn in a bin of this size you're going to need a pretty long period of time you know measured in more like months of really good warm dry air so it's it's really going to be important to get dry corn into a bin like this and then we can keep it dry and make sure that it that it stays um, in that condition one of the things with soybeans you mentioned rehydration um, that is also a possibility if you think about that we're basically doing the opposite of drying so um, that's a little easier because now we start to get days when we need humidity. So when there's a lot of moisture in the air on those days that it's the conditions are right, we can run the fans and, and get moisture back into soybeans. Now, one of the things that I'll caution is don't expect to take a bin of 9% soybeans and get them back up to 13. That's probably not going to be possible. Uh, you just, we tend not to have the weather conditions here in the Midwest to do that. But if you've got them at 10 or 11 and you want to get them up to maybe 12 or 13, that's something that if the weather's right, we absolutely can take a system like this and, and do that.
very cool. Yeah, hopefully I give you guys a little bit of an insight of what the smart technology that's actually going to go on over there. We'll talk more about that when they come back to install it, but we'll pick back up with you guys when we're back to picking up the site here in a day or two. What's that thing? So the Haggy has absolutely nothing to do with this, and uh, this video is probably like two weeks. Uh, since we took the last clips of this video crops have moved themselves along We've kind of get busy actually taking care of the crops versus doing a little bit of construction work But we've got rain out here today. The last thing we're gonna do in this video is take this girl right here And go haul us in about 40 ton of rock We need to have probably more than 40 ton of rock because we got to get the rock in because I'm thinking they're supposed to be pouring uh, the uh, Pad here maybe next week. Hopefully next week. So I need to have everything that I'm supposed to have there for them. And uh, to save some money, I'm hauling in the rock. If I'm saving any money with a 454 and high dollar gasoline, I don't know, but I enjoy doing it every now and then. Another good thing about this uh, here today, it's supposed to be a little cooler and there's no AC. $50 right there. Swan on the hood adds about 10 horsepower. Oh, the power windows are kind of different on this one. Put a board in there so I don't die. I only get maimed. That one's got air. That one's got air. Hey, sir, you got air? Sir? Yeah. That one's on an air diet. Let's go. Why I said that like Mario, I don't know. To the rock. It appears I have a little bit of an issue. The tire decided to let it tear out. Made a pretty big bang too. Let's go see if I got another tire to put on it. <laughs> Always something. I need to reteach myself how to do this every time I do this. I should not. The only job description I'll ever want that deals with tired is retired. Yeah? Yeah?
quarries are pretty cool. It'd be neat to actually see the the whole process from blasting the crushing to laying it out. I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but it'd be cool. So here's what we hauled in. It's uh, still got the clay fines, lime chips. Don't ask me what they call this stuff. And besides, they'll call it something else somewhere else. But they said that that'll pack down really well when we get to building the wet bin here. Corn plot corn's looking pretty darn good. If you guys want to check out any information more about GSI, I will have their website linked down below. Some information on the Green View link down below. You guys will get to see that a whole lot more uh, coming up here in a few more videos. Along with a few other things we have planned with GSI, uh, obviously you guys will see the bin get built start to finish. We'll be talking about three-phase power, and I think we're going to go take a factory tour. So if you would be oh so kind to hit the thumbs up button on the way out, maybe uh, that'll help remove the rest of these trees. <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Like always, we'll see you in the next one.